young men are like any man is supposed to protect and provide. And when a young lady comes and speaks to you about something they're concerned about, it's your duty to step up. And uh, there's there's an obvious attack on masculinity um, across the world and the states and Canada too. And uh, they're they're trying to demasculate men and shame them for being men. And uh, they're trying to um, make women men. <laughs> uh, it, it's completely ridiculous and uh, it, it's shameful. So I'm I'm certainly not going to join that. Um, I'm going to be a man. I always have been and I always will be. And uh, with that, I'm going to complete the duties that come with it. This interview is brought to you by The Officer Tatum Store. The Officer Tatum Store. Get the merch link in the description section. We got all the cool merch. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications anytime I go live and make the, make a video. Make sure you still subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to interview Josh Alexander, the young man that is so extraordinary. I feel like every young man in the age of 14 through 16 high schoolers should be just like him if you don't know who he is I, I i made a video about him you can hit the video here link is in the description section because he got arrested in canada for standing up for truth standing up for the lord and standing up against the woke culture so i hope that you enjoy this interview let's roll it ladies and gentlemen gentlemen ladies welcome uh to the off tatum show i got my the, the coolest young man that i have made a video about in a very long time josh alexander Josh, thank you so much, man, for joining me. This is a very informal conversation that I want to have with you. I just want to get to know you, man. I thought that what you did at that school, your presentation of, of what the truth is, was exceptional, man. And, and, and we need more young men that are bold and brave like you. So I just want to go through and get to know you a little bit. So uh, where were you born at? Yeah, I was born in Canada. Um, I'm an American citizen, but I was born in Canada. So do awesome. It. And you had made mention off camera that you you lived in Arizona. What part of Arizona were you in? I was uh, in Chandler, just outside of uh, Phoenix. That's awesome, man. I'm in Scottsdale, so uh, you wouldn't have been too far from me. So, you know, what made you or, or at least can you explain to us exactly what happened on that day uh, when you initially got suspended or expelled? I don't know how they describe it in Canada, but ex explain to me exactly what happened on that day. Yeah, so it, the, the issue had actually been going on for quite a while. Um, in Canada, there's a public and a Catholic board. Um, they're both publicly funded, but one has a little bit more of a religious take on it, you'd, you'd expect, because it's Catholic. But uh, I personally am not Catholic, but I, I found myself in the Catholic board after I'd been suspended maybe four times from the public board for organizing uh, student walkouts against the online learning and the mask mandates and uh, in solidarity to the Freedom Convoy and all that. So I had switched to the Catholic board. And uh, not long into my time there, I was informed by some female students that males were using the female washrooms. And uh, I started to see what the, the teachers were pushing in the classroom, like the, the, uh, the focus on gender dysphoria and um, just a, a lot of stuff that didn't belong with kids. So I, uh, I ended up taking it to the office. It came up in class discussions and uh, it became quite a controversial topic. I was getting showed at, you know, I was labeled a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, a bigot, you know, all because I, I quoted some scripture and said that there's only two genders. And uh, yeah, so I, I tried to get my voice heard in the office. They refused to talk to me. They actually said they were uh, no longer going to entertain that discussion with me. Um, a female student, actually, after I had gone forward, she decided to uh, speak with the uh, principal as well. They refused to hear her as well. And uh, at that point, I decided to organize a protest outside the school. Um, it was off school property. There's no legal issues. I was in contact with the police liaison. We, it was all set up. And two days before the protest, they suspended me indefinitely. And they didn't really give a reason um, until later on. And... Uh, Josh, I want to jump in. I want to jump in real quick. When you when you say that you organize a protest, what what did that look like? Were you you know did you have signs? Were you wearing t shirts? How many people were out there? You know, were, were you positioned right in front of the school? Were you guys on an intersection? Kind of what what does that pro what did that protest look like? And what was kind of what you wanted to accomplish by doing that protest initially? 
Yeah, so the, the protest, um, I threw out a poster. I put out a uh, video commercial online. Um, we uh, had a couple different organizations promoting it, so, uh, even a uh, political party or two political parties. And um, yeah, it was just, we had an intersection. I had a sound system. There weren't. So what happened is two days before the protest, when I put the poster out, um, I got suspended. So they went in class to class and then, and they uh, disengaged all the students and intimidated them and uh, threatened them with con consequences if they ended up walking out and joining the protest with me. So that uh, drastically reduced the numbers of students. So at the end, only about 15 students walked out when it was looking like there's going to be more like 100. Um, and uh, but I did have community supporters and uh, I had a lot of counter protesters, um, maybe maybe 200 or so. And uh, they uh, there is actually a union that was bussing people up from the Capitol. And uh, yeah, it was it was quite the ordeal. They, it was pretty uh, heavily funded, obviously. But they, I had uh, a lot of pride groups there protesting. me. Yeah, that was very interesting. You know, it, it takes a lot of goods especially in a climate like you're describing. I mean, I, I would almost imagine that in Canada, it, it's probably either just the same or worse than what we're experiencing here in the States because people have gone extra woke. I mean, they're losing their minds and they cannot have a functional conversation about people who have different opinions. So after, they, after you did the protest and they decided to... I guess, take more action against you. Ex explain that uh, moving forward from there. Yeah, so they, they suspended me two days later. I did the, I went ahead with the protest and did it. Um, I waited out my suspension. Um, the, it was an indefinite suspension that ended up being called to an end after 20 days. And I had a meeting. Um, this was right around Chris, the Christmas break era. And uh, I had a meeting where they were going to set up the conditions for my return and all that. And they ended up saying that I was permanently banned from two of my classes and uh, I wasn't allowed to speak to certain students. And, so what, uh, what, what did they want you to do? If you if you were permanently banned from two classes, do you have alternative classes? Do you, are you taking them online? Are you having to do it after school? Like, are, are you just banned and you cannot take those classes or get the education? So what they were going to do is give me a separate room in the building to sit there by myself with with the supervisor, not a teacher, a, a uh, staff member that was to supervise me to make sure I didn't misbehave or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be alone in this room doing the uh, some just some classwork that the teacher would set aside for me. And that's what that was going to look like for the remainder of the semester. So obviously this was a form of blatant discrimination. Um, it was a restriction of my freedom of expression, my freedom of religion, all these fundamental freedoms found in our charter. And uh, I decided to get in contact with Liberty Coalition Canada. Um, they ended up funding my, uh, my case. I had a lawyer that communicated with school and he informed them that I wouldn't be uh, abiding by those conditions and I would return to school like any other student. And uh, I would disregard anything that was unlawful or discriminatory. Um, so that's what I did. I returned to school and they kind of, they followed me around that day. They told me I wasn't welcome. Uh, the vice principal would follow me to each class and write down anything I said. Um, and then by the end of the day, I got handed a trespassing notice um, as well as a, another suspension. So the, uh, the trespassing notice went till the end of that semester and the suspension was only five days. But uh, yeah, that's that's what that looked like. And, and and let me let me just go back real quick. You're 16 years old, correct? Yeah. So and, and my math is not that good. Does, are you a junior or a sophomore in in high school? Um, I don't know. See, that's 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 American terminology. We don't. Oh really yeah. Use okay. Anything. So what? How many years you have? I'd, to I'd be in grade 11. School? I'd be in, I'm in grade 11, so I have, a, well, a year and some now left. But oh, okay. now I'm, I'm back to the start of grade 11 because I've lost all my credits. <laughs> that is absolutely mind-blowing to me. But just for the terminology, you know, freshman is ninth grade, okay. sophomore is 10th grade, junior is 11th grade, and then 12th grade is a senior. Mostly that's a college term, but we, we kind of use some of those terms in high school in, in the okay. States. But uh, So you, you were in the 11th grade, junior in high school, and now you have to redo 
at least the credits that you missed in the 11th grade to finish that and, and go on to be a senior. Yeah. How, so how I is, have to retake the entire grade at this point, it would appear. And so now that they've done that, because I think Stevie wanted can see um, that they have been very discriminatory against you, obviously violating, I don't know how many rights of yours, um, pigeonholing you, using revenge tactics, coercion. I mean, you can name a, a slew of things that they're doing to manipulate the situation to benefit, in my opinion, the woke ideology instead of, you know, hearing you out. So now that you're in this position, you have a lawyer, they've suspended you indefinitely. Um, what's your next step from here? Yeah, so what they they suspended me and uh, I should actually I should go back a bit when when they gave me these conditions, these unreasonable conditions, and myself and my lawyer informed the school I wouldn't abide by them. Uh, that's when they handed me an exclusion order. So usually, um, if it was disciplinary, you get either a suspension or a, a expulsion, right? Um, I'd never heard of an exclusion until that point. And uh, apparently it's used when the student hasn't done anything that requires discipline, but the principal still feels they're a threat. Um, so they just exclude them from this building. So that's why that's why I was handed the trespassing notice when I returned, because I had this exclusion order and I went to the classes I was banned from. Um, so anyways, I waited out the trespassing notice. I waited out the second suspension. Um, I've now lost four credits. It's the end of the at semester, the beginning of the new semester. And I have four new classes. And uh, just before I return, um, there was a, a holiday or something. And uh, uh, my lawyer sent a letter and he said that Josh is going to return to school. He's going to continue to adhere to his religious beliefs. And uh, he expects not to be discriminated against as he was before. And yeah, that was that was the basis of the letter. And they responded to, to, to it by saying that um, I had get, was given another exclusion order because they felt my presence in the building would be detrimental to the physical and mental well-being of the pupils. Um, so at that point, again, I've, I've waited out a, two suspensions, an exclusion, and a trespassing notice. Um, and they've now, I haven't done anything wrong except express my beliefs, um, both religious, biological, and just realistic beliefs <laughs> and uh i so i've been handed all th this uh, exclusion order i'm kicked out for the remainder of the year and uh i spoke with my lawyer and again we decided that i was just going to return to school like any other student um because i have a right to be there and what they were doing was completely unlawful so i went to class that day um i went to my auto class they first they tried to take my phone um and then they actually removed all the students from the class, told them that the class was dismissed so they could, they could speak to me alone. So when, at that point, I just decided to get up, grab my bag and go with the class. The class was dismissed. And then they had to, they had to shout everybody back into the class. And they were like, okay, everybody stay in here. Josh will stay outside the class. I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm here for class. I'll go with the class. <laughs> so I walked back into the classroom with my bags and all that. And, uh, and then I got, um, they took a more reasonable approach and, uh, I said, I'll, if I am able to get my lawyer on the phone, I will accompany you down to the office and hopefully we can have a discussion there. So that's what we did. Um, I got my lawyer on the phone. I accompanied them to the office and almost bait. Well, immediately when I walked into the office, the principal stood in front of the exit and, uh, informed me that there were some people on the way to see me. Um, a couple minutes later, there is uh, two OPP officers, Ontario Provincial Police, and uh, they walked in. They informed me I was trespassing. Um, I told them that I was only uh, in this situation because I had expressed my uh, beliefs and that it was a violation of my uh, fundamental freedoms. And uh, yeah, they, they told me that uh, I was under arrest. They read me my rights and uh, ended up getting in the back of the cruiser and they drove me away. <laughs> So when they when they read to you or rights, did you did you give them a statement or you are you uh, just defer to only communicating with your lawyer? Well, they they asked me if I wanted to call my lawyer and I said I did. Um, they actually had me hang up with my lawyer when I was under arrest, which was because he was on the phone. And when they took my phone, they had me hang up with the lawyer and then they arrested me. Um, and uh, they ended up releasing me to my brother. Um, and uh, I, I was able to contact my lawyer from there. 
but they gave me a, a trespassing charge. Interesting. So what what do your parents say about this? I mean, I know nothing about your family. I know nothing about your parents. I don't know if you even have parents. I mean, I'm assuming because you seem like a pretty witty young man, very intelligent, way far beyond what I was when I was 16 years old. So so how do you how do your parents feel about this? Well, I'm sure they weren't happy to uh, see their son arrested, but uh, they're supportive. They understand that uh, I was only expressing my beliefs, so they, they do support me. Um, uh, uh, again, uh, actually, I guess the, the story didn't end there because I did end up getting arrested again the next day, but <laughs> how did that happen? T- tell me about that. <laughs> well, when I watched your first video there, the footage you were playing was actually the second arrest. Um, oh. so, so that one was in Ottawa and I, you can hear all the people shouting in the background. They're all celebrating that I'm being yeah. arrested again. But, uh, that was at a, uh, a drag queen story hour where a transvestite was reading to kids. And uh, I was there, um, my crew from Safe Canada, you can see it on my hat there. I have, I, I run a student organization or a youth organization. Not many of us are students at this point. Because we've all been <laughs> youth, but, um, we, uh, we run a youth organization and uh, we, we decided to throw together a protest um, because our National Arts Centre was uh, allowing a transvestite to read to kids, which is completely inappropriate. So we had a protest outside. Um, I had a megaphone and I was, uh, I was actually quoting some scripture. I was giving the gospel to the crowd because we had a lot of, we were vastly outnumbered by counter protesters like usual. Um, Canada's pretty woke, but uh, yeah, I was preaching and uh, the police told me if I didn't stop using my megaphone, I'd be arrested for disruption. And, uh, I was in the midst of quoting John three sixteen, so I wasn't going to stop. And yeah, they threw me up against the cruiser and arrested me there. And then uh, just the other day, the my arresting officer apologized and said it was a mistake because they charged me with trespassing when I was on a public sidewalk. <laughs> and uh, they said they meant to meant to arrest me for disruption. And uh, so, oh, yeah, oh wait, they, wait, so so they they arrest you for a charge, and then they. Did they arrest you for two charges or they arrest you for trespassing? They arrested me for trespassing and then apologized. And and, uh, and then they said they should have arrested you for something. Else. So so pretty much what you're saying is they falsely arrest you yeah, for trespassing. Absolutely. Then they apologize yeah. and said, oops, we should have actually arrested you for something else. And, and I, in my opinion, because we were too incompetent and didn't know what we wanted to arrest you for in the first place. So we just made something up. And then we had to go look through the law after we messed up to try to find something we could legitimately arrest you for. So they're yeah. not they're, they didn't come back and charge you with anything else, did they? No, no, not at all. Either way, both charges that they wanted to charge me with were both false charges. I had communicated with police liaison and uh, we'd agreed on the protest location. They gave me the go ahead. I'd informed them that I was going to be there. Um, what happened is I got assaulted by the crowd of counter protesters. They pinned me up against the wall and they stole my hat, they stomped it out, they were hitting me, they were trying to break my megaphone. And then police ran in and they grabbed myself, my brother, and my other buddy, Monty Walker, and uh, they threw us into traffic and then arrested my brother for being in traffic. And then when I tried to return to my, get off the street and return to my protest location, that's when they arrested me. Um, so yeah, they arrested me and my brother. For, uh, so what I'm hearing out of all of this is that you're going to be rich. That's what, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> you're I don't con- think so, with, the, with your rights being violated at the school is a no-brainer. I think you have a lot of legal standing there. And I don't know how they do things in, in Canada if the Canadian government in the courts are going to, to be fair. However, but it seems like you have a, a legitimate civil rights case potentially and then also the, the police are falsely arresting you i mean it, it's it's almost like a governmental school system coercion not coercion but collaboration to to come against you or to i guess intimidate you by retaliating because you're just keeping it real and telling the truth i want to i want to go to another point here where did you get your foundational beliefs because I have friends that live in Canada. I have friends that are born and raised in Canada. I, they're more American than they are Canadian, in my opinion. However, you know, I'm told that religion, Christianity, religion is not very prevalent in Canada. Almost like most people are neutral to it, or most people are not religious. Is is that true? And how did you find the boldness in in, in your faith? Well, I 
I would say religion is fairly prevalent in Canada. Um, they're, they're like, there's a church on every corner in the town, but uh, I wouldn't say like people aren't as bold about it. There's not, there's, it's, it's, we're Canadians. I mean, we're very stereotypically easygoing and that becomes a problem when you have a tyrannical government infringing on your yeah. freedom. You can't, you can't be easygoing when that happens. Um, so yeah, my, my, my Christian beliefs do play a large role in everything I do and the decisions I make. Um, I, I, to me, it was just the natural thing to do. It always has been, um, young men are, like any man is supposed to protect and provide. And when a young lady comes and speaks to you about something they're concerned about, it's your duty to step up. And uh, there's there's an obvious attack on masculinity um, across the world and the States and Canada too. And uh, they're, they're trying to demasculate men and shame them for being men. And uh, they're trying to um, make women men. <laughs> uh, it, it's completely ridiculous and uh, it, it's shameful. So I'm, I'm certainly not going to, join that um i'm gonna be a man i always have been and i always will be and uh with that i'm going to complete the duties that come with it awesome awesome so you are you born in a, in a christian household or are you kind of yeah. like the outcast standout uh christian or, or or is the structure come from your 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 mother and father yeah i was i was raised in a uh christian family even i was always in an evangelical church when growing up awesome and, and and what's the impact of your father in your life and you, by all means, you can go as far as you want to go or as little as you want to go. But I don't want to get too personal, but I do want to know, um, you know, what's the impact of having your father in your life and how much does he impact your decisions as a young man to stand up and be bold? Yeah, the well, the family unit is powerful. And with that, as the father, as the head of the family is obviously a plays a major role. Um, I mean, I've been. Uh, I, I've grown up and they, they, they respect uh, my decisions and they want me to have um, to be able to make those decisions without being fully reliant on my parents. Um, as I'm sure it, it wouldn't have been my parents' decision to go get me arrested, but, uh, um, but no, they, de they definitely play a role and lead, uh, lead with example. So sure. That's awesome, man. I have a, I have, I want to go down a couple more questions. I got so many things I want to ask you. I'm gonna try to keep it within a, a reasonable time frame. Um, now, now, why were you in? Now, you told me you have dual citizenship. Two things. Why are you not in the States now? And then another thing, maybe unrelated. What were you doing in Chandler, uh, Arizona? Yeah, we were uh, we were actually planning a church in Chandler. I was I was very young at the time, but uh, we started a church down there um, and uh, we ended up moving back to Canada. But uh i actually can't get into the states right now i'm unvaccinated and uh that that's a fairly serious issue these days apparently that's coming to an end but we'll see um i also am unable to get my passport because it's so backed up so i'm an american citizen and i'm barred from entering the country and here i am uh in, in canada um, so <laughs> you never know. I might just have to run to the American embassy. We'll see. Yeah. So just for clarity, you, you are, you are, you have dual citizenship. You were born in Canada. Yeah. You have American citizenship now because of the, uh, Corona Rita, they won't let you come to America because they want you to be vaccinated. I think people coming into America have to be vaccinated. So that's, what's keeping you out of the, out of the States or, or you would be here. Yeah. If I, now, if I could get my passport, it wouldn't the the vaccine. I don't think it would matter anymore, but uh, I can't get my passport because it's so backed up. Oh, OK, that, that sounds very typical of Canadian government. You know, a lot of people talk about the health care system in Canada and that everybody has things for free. But, you know, if, if you need certain types of surgeries or things uh, with everybody having access for free, you know, it seems like the government can be really backed up and stalled out but i want to hear your your opinions i know you have made mention just uh briefly about the the struggles of society against young men what do you think the solution is and i know that you're a young man you're 16 years old you're very wise for your age i'm sure that as you develop and grow and get experiences 
and when you become 30 something like me, I mean, you're going to have so much more experience and, and knowledge in these things. But I want to know as a 16 year old man, what do you think is the solution to combating the emasculation, the demasculation of men in, in, in both countries, in America or in Canada? Yeah, well, everything we're seeing these days can be all turned back to it. Our, our, our world has turned on God. Um, God's natural order has the has a family, has man like a masculine man and a feminine woman. That's that's the only way it's going to work. Um, that they're trying to destroy that. They hate God. They hate anything uh, we as Christians stand for. And uh, we have to get our make our voices heard. I mean, I've been arrested twice in a week, but uh, I'm not going to stop because it's it's more important that we we get that message out there and it's it's important that older than me also lead with example i'm trying to encourage my peers but uh i've obviously looked up to people i've i even watched you when i was 14 years old so um it's quite an honor to be on your show so uh it, it's important that men lead and uh, encourage other young men and uh we, we need to we need to go back turn back to god sir yeah, I, and I agree with you a thousand percent. I think that, you know, I have this shirt on, you know, Jesus is Lord because, I, I, you know, I think that God is very important. You know, one of our pillars here at our from our company, because I run a company and we have, I don't know, like eight employees here. Um, but one of our, our pillars and, and the very the most important pillar is put God first. And, and that's what we believe, because once you put God first, everything else lines up perfectly. So I know that we're you know, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you everybody's interviewing you. And, and I hope, man, that you just continue to run strong and do incredible things and keep putting your voice out there. And I hope you get on every news station on the man, because I think young men like you are very rare. And, and, and to be bold and have a voice, I think it's a God sent thing. And I want to help you promote that. So what are you doing and how can we support you? Like, I know that you run a student organization. I know that you probably have some things going on with your legal defense. Um, explain to us, in, in, you know, as, as briefly as you can, but succinctly as you can, how can we help you? Yeah, um, my, my legal case is probably going to get pretty expensive. Um, so there's a, there's a separate organization that's uh, funding that, and it's Liberty Coalition Canada. You can find them at libertycoalitioncanada.com. Um, that's where my legal fees uh, get paid. And then uh, just for my, myself and my crew, um, we uh, we are at savecanada.army. That's our website. And uh, you can find a few ways to support us there. You can buy some merch, whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's... It, we we uh, we also rely on our supporters and uh, those who who, who um, can't, are unable to uh, take up the fight we're taking right now to support us and everybody counts. I've, it's uh, it's just as important to those behind the screen um, what they're doing. One hundred percent, man. Well, I, I definitely appreciate you coming on. I wanted to make this quick and succinct. I just wanted to hear your side of it and give you a new uh, another opportunity to just get your voice out there, get the word out there. And I'm encouraging everybody that's watching this to go. We got the links in the description section. Go on. Hit the links, support in ways that you can. I know my family, we're, we're going to support you. We're going to support the Army side of it. Um, your your, your uh, young man army coalition we're going to go and hit that link and we're going to support as a family as a as a company as well so man i appreciate you josh for coming on man god bless you i hope the best for you and anything you need from us man we got you covered um and, and also i know that you you have to be on social media so the last thing is where can we find you on social media and then we're going to get out of here yeah um my my twitter is my main platform uh it's out of fish underscore a and uh that, um, you can also find me on instagram and facebook uh, I, i'm getting censored a lot more now so it might be difficult but uh twitter is the main platform okay also we'll put all of your your contacts in the description as well so thank you josh man i appreciate you man god bless you god bless your family and, and thank you for joining me yeah god bless you thank you it's an honor
What's going on, y'all? This is your boy, The Officer Tatum. If you enjoyed this video, I make videos every single day, three videos a day. Go to the playlist that says new videos. I have them out, ready, available for you. Like and subscribe to this channel. Let's get it.